In 2013, I had the privilege to co-author a Transparency International Fair Play document, the foreword of which states, and I quote, sport allows billions of people, be they professional athletes, supporters, or amateurs playing for pleasure and health, to experience great emotion, to learn the value and importance of rules, and to develop respect for others. Those at the top of sport, heads of international federations, as well as volunteer leaders at their local clubs, have a duty to set high standards and lead with integrity, not least because of the enormous influence sport has in shaping social values. Poor governance and corruption damage not only the image of sport, but they compromise the ability of sport to spread the value of fair play and integrity, especially for young people." Unquote. I'm also pleased to acknowledge Mr. Ruben Lefuca, Vice Chair of Transparency International. I have with me, published in 2016, a global corruption report on sport by Transparency International. It's only 365 pages, covers a wide range of corrupt activities in sport, much of which has been talked of today in different formats, whether it was money laundering, etc. And as every day we read the newspapers and see various aspects of sport, we are never short, we never go a day without reading of some corruption affecting not only the country in general, but sport in particular. Believe me, it's covered here. We heard a couple of days ago about a scandal with admissions to universities in, in, the, in the America. There's a report here on US college sport. So whenever you have a chance, this is available at the offices of Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute. And when one day you have cause to refer to corruption in sumo wrestling, it's also in here. Sport is a global phenomenon touching the lives of billions of people. Sport gives people hope and joy. When our team wins, we are ecstatic. When it loses, we are devastated. But when the results are determined, not by fair competition, we are betrayed. Sport also wields considerable influence on the national psyche. Those who participate do so out of love, whether they actually play or support. They understand that it takes commitment and dedication. And they appreciate that at its pinnacle, sport encompasses the purest form of competition. We expect participants to observe the rules, uphold the spirit of the game, display Corinthian values, and thereby, through this, we promote and maintain the integrity of sport. And we need to acknowledge that sport, not just on the field, is of vital importance in that it produces the real role models and exemplars for the community and society. It provides the benchmarks by which we measure ourselves, our community, our nation. It generates our self-esteem. We heard this morning Vice Chairman Lefuka say that his son, 
asked about Brian Lara. We are all esteemed in this company, in our various fields. But most people outside of Trinidad and Tobago will not hear of the names of the big industrialists or the economists or the lawyers or, or whatever. But our sportsmen project an image that we cannot ignore. If, for instance, Usain Bolt, who has been our latest champion, and I say our with impunity, if it were discovered that there was anything untoward about his performances, what would be the effect? In fact, I do him a disservice even to mention that because that is not likely. But ladies and gentlemen, we marginalize sport, corruption, and its implications at our peril. Therefore, we need to be more involved in how sports are administered to ensure that sport meets and fulfills our expectations. Sporting administrative bodies have evolved to take ownership of an enormous public good. Let us not forget that the High Court in India has set a precedent in determining that cricket or sport is a public good involving soul and passion and involving public monies. So those administrative bodies win the right to represent countries and nations. But these organizations operate almost as independent states, but without the checks and balances, and with vast possibilities to maneuver to remain in power. They claim legitimacy and then they demand complete autonomy. It is sad to relate that the vast majority of the sporting organizations in Trinidad and Tobago are either engaged in court matters or in disputes that do a disservice to the sports that they represent or administer. I also hasten to say that in an international context, the protection offered to those local sports by the international umbrella organizations, FIFA, mentioned quite a few times in this book. The IOC, the ICC, through a very convenient, what they call non-interference rule. If that body, that umbrella body, perceives that there is what they call government interference, they can suspend that sport from competition at international level. Maybe, Ruben, if the snake were going in to the house, they would blame not the person who sent the snake, but the person who tried to interfere with the snake entering. And the problem becomes them, not the snake. But you will have a better way of putting that story across. Trinidad and Tobago is also a member of the Commonwealth, has always been active in the Commonwealth's activities, including its regular heads of government meetings, Chugam, and the Commonwealth Games. As such, knowingly or unknowingly, Trinidad and Tobago is committed to the development of policies and strategies 
to maximize the contribution of sport to national development objectives and the sustainable development goals. This work focuses on the international use of sport as a tool in advancing sustainable development and strengthening governance, gender equality, and the protection and promotion of human rights. Sport is a tool for positive action. As chairman of the Commonwealth Advisory Body on Sport, the body mandated to advise the Commonwealth Secretary General and member governments on sport policy issues, particularly related to sport for development and protecting the integrity of sport. I participate in a relatively new initiative, the International Partnership Against Corruption in Sport, IPACS which aims to bring together international sports organizations, governments, intergovernmental organizations, and other relevant stakeholders, for example, sports organizations, the UN Office of, on Drugs and Crime, etc., to strengthen and support efforts to eliminate corruption and promote a culture of good government, governance in and around sport." Unquote. The reality is that there is widespread need for more entities to join the fight against corruption and the need to cover the wide range of perspectives from which to approach corruption. The pertinent question would also be around how to coordinate those efforts, how to navigate the web or maze of corrupt activities. And we've heard them all mentioned today, match fixing, illegal gambling, money laundering, doping, bid rigging, nepotism, cronyism, bribery, conflict of interest. All the negatives of corruption which deflect the use of scarce resources that could be used to enhance development needs and balance this with the good which sport brings with it for health, physical activity for all to reduce the effects of chronic, non communicable diseases, etc. Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean must face up to the issues which define our environment. And we must join international efforts which will assist us in resolving these in issues. As I mentioned, daily increasing numbers of issues are revealed to us through the media, including social media. We have to be more active in addressing all of these issues and appeal to you individually. You must join the Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute. The expertise which is before us would fuel information into our efforts in transparency to advocate for stronger laws, for stronger legislation, for stronger regulations, but more important, as was mentioned earlier, we have the laws, we have the plans, we have the goals, but it's to execute them. Each of you, public servants in private enterprise, have an opportunity, but are restricted by some of the things that you have to do in your private capacities at work. Join transparency. Make us a stronger institution and help us to tackle the things that affect our lives and the lives of the following generations. We need you, ladies and gentlemen, to lobby and engage our leaders. 
We need a brave and committed media. Not just one that reports things a couple of days and then moves on to something else. And we need the so-called silent majority to wake up and speak up. We must crack down on corruption. Sport is a pillar for human and social development and is also recognized as a, as a significant catalyst towards the attainment of the UN's Agenda 2030 and the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. It is imperative that we pick up the mantle. We need to encourage and to build a system of sports governance in which fair play always prevails. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen.